We are joined now by Tim Mack, Director of Track and Field Training and Development at Spire Academy, and Kibwe Johnson, the throws coach at Spire. Thank you both for joining us. Kibwe, I want to start first with you. Congrats on the new job. What's been your first impressions of your new role? First impressions, um, they've been really great. It's, it's a community and a family and people are really enjoying what they're doing and trying to build something from, uh, from the ground up. And that's something I could really get on board with. And Tim, give us a little bit of background, if you could, on Spire. What's your day-to-day -day like out there? Oh, my day to day is, uh, you know, well, we get here in the morning and um, have a practice usually around 10. And after that, um, you know, we'll, we'll break for a little bit for lunch, have another practice around 1.30 it's, and then uh, another practice at 3 o'clock, another, another practice at 5.30 and then out of here at 7. So a lot of practice. Tim, to, uh, to you. When, uh, when you get involved in the, the track and field world, whether you're in high school, college, pro, uh, a lot of times people's first uh, impression of Spire is through the, the Spire track meets that go on, you know, Big Ten hosts championships there. Um, but Spire is more than just an indoor track facility. Obviously, it's a whole academy. Can you kind of give it just like a, a high-level overview of what Spire is and what it has become up until this point? Yeah, well, right now, Spire is an academy and institute. Um, right now, we have an academy for track and field. We have academy for swimming and also for basketball. And um, that is a full-scale academy where, where kids come here and they live um, either in the residences, which is on site, or in some of the homes, which are close by. That would be for the college timeout people. But... Um, the, they they live they live here they they train here and they go to school here and they will eat here they we also have a a, a weight well, weight room where they do their workouts and we have a we have a, a trainer on site and uh, we have so we have an athletic trainer as well so they can take care of their injuries if need be but they also do their class work on site and um, yeah, it's a it's it's an all inclusive uh, academy right now, and uh, we just we're just looking to have a uh, have a lot of successful athletes coming in here. What type of a lot of successful athletes? It's a unique situation to have a, an academy centered around you know these athletic events and athletic skills. What, what type of student athletes does Aspire look for to try to bring into, into their wings and, and, and take over and, and coach? Yeah, there's a number of different athletes. There's a, there's, first of all, there's academy athletes, which, which, are, which train here. And, and those are your high school athletes. Um, our, we also have high school uh, gap year athletes who, who are um, college gap year athletes who might come here for a year, kind of take off from from college to try to improve in their sport. We have uh, uh, kids that are right out of high school and um, they who might want a little bit extra time in uh, preparing for college. Um, so we have those, those types of athletes. I mean, we, we look for like very dedicated athletes, um, athletes with a strong, strong work, work ethic. And also those who, who, who are very curious about their sport, who are curious about their event, who, who want to continue to study and, and uh, study in high school or, or um, take some of the classes um, from, you know, in college. And um, basically we really like to look for some athletes that are, that really love to compete too. Um, that's one of the major things that we try to instill in some of the athletes here. It's like, yeah, we have to, we can train hard and we can do a lot of things um, to improve your training. And, and we do that every day and uh, day out. But at the same time, you got to be able to compete when, when it counts. And, and that, that's what we try to prepare the athlete to do. And Kibwe, from your perspective, what kinds of athletes make a good fit for what you guys are doing at Spire? Um, open-minded, 
open-minded athletes, it's, it's the last piece of the puzzle is, is probably like performance and potential, that sort of thing. Um, now, of course, it's nice with athletes who, who come to you already, like quite good, but that's only a small piece of the puzzle. So to be able to have athletes that are open, regardless of whatever their, um, their physical capabilities are at that time, to be able to develop is, is a large part of like what we do here. And from the throws perspective, I asked him this at the beginning, what an average day like looks like. Uh, but for you, Kibwe, what is what does a day look like from the perspective of one of the athletes? Can you walk me through in as much detail as you can from waking up in the morning until they go to bed at night? So the school um, situation would be pretty much the same. Um, it's morning school and then there's the afternoon training. Since I just there, there actually is no uh, thrower in the academy, so I fill up my time. I also actually serve as like throws coach, but also uh, business development director. And part of my role there is to like let's get some more kids in here and figure out some um, the strategies to be able to do that. Now, part of what makes Spire really unique is not just the um, academy component, but then there's also the after school um, clinics or clubs or whatever um, they might be called program. And so in that group, I've got a girl um, who I train and that that usually starts at like four o'clock or something whenever she gets here. So to be able to have um, afternoon training, morning school, they, they get fed. Um, it's a it's a good it's it's unique in that we can work with kids outside of spe specifically the ones that go to school and live here. And I, and I can explain a little more in depth as far as like an actual athlete, what they go through. And I have a pole vaulter right now, but she'll have a workout in the morning. Um, and that'll go from seven 30 till about eight 30. Then they'll, they'll break and they'll go to their classes and take and do their classroom work from nine until about 12. They go to lunch mm -hmm. 12 to one, they have another classroom session, one to three workout session, specific uh, workout, whether it's with, with Kibwe or me or Charlie Powell. And uh, that, that goes from about 315 till about five. And then they go into the weight room and they do their uh, strength training. And it might be either weight training or it could be working on specific, uh, specific things uh, that are called uh, uh, special exercises that will help them in their weaknesses. So it could be one day could be weight training, but the other day could be just recovery, or it could be working on their uh, special exercises to improve their uh, wherever their whatever is needed for them. And then after that, um, they will have their dinner, and then after that, it's schoolwork. So that's, and then it's uh, bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> If what what would be what's like your elevator pitch or just pitch in general to a fifteen year old, sixteen year old, or you know, someone who's in the middle of college to that going to the Spire Academy is in their best interest over going through training with a public high school and doing public track and field or you know, just staying with your university? Like what is one of the main key points that Spire offers to these athletes that just going through the regular school system and wherever they grew up that is different from that. Well, I think uh, first it's, 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 I guess keep my go first and then ahead. Tim. Yeah. Oh, whoever. Okay. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's the coaches and, um, there, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of quite skilled coaches and coaches that have been around for a long time and, you know, in, in your typical public school, but it is different when, you know, all your coaches either coached a bunch of Olympians or are Olympians. Um, and that's just kind of what it is. Now, I think there is something to be said to be able to have that experience because there, I think there are, I mean, I don't know, I can talk to some of my other athletes, right? And there's, there's a lot that is learned in those type of situations without without there ever being a conversation. It's just observation. And the kids are just like, I learned this from you. I was like, well, I never said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't remember coming to you and being like, hey, you should do this. They were just like, coach, I mean, you just kind of carry yourself a certain way. And I'm like, well, 
yeah okay great <laughs> you know glad you learned that um and also like the school itself you know what i mean like how this place is set up it really prepares an a student athlete for college like there's 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 no better way to 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 basically a trial run right before getting to university because it is a different world and you hear those stories all the time where high school kids are going to school and being like i had no idea college was going to be like this or something or you know i'm sure parents and counselors and whoever else would tell them this is what college is right but kids you know i was a kid once i didn't really listen until you were thrown into it um so being able to do it here is is really special tim do you have a caring yeah have... carrying off what uh kidway was saying i think that um what's what's different too is what i've noticed over the last six months um already working with one athlete it's it's uh it's like one like a half a year is almost like a full year in high school or even college to be quite honest because we they we don't just work out in the afternoon we also work out in the morning and we and and when we have our specific workouts usually in high school it's going to be you go to practice and let's just say it's pole vault because you know i coach pole vault but it's like you go there and you vault but oh yeah, but here we work on specific running exercises to improve your running and if you're um weak in um your range of motion then that's going to also be worked on in the in this in the in the weight room so um we not only just work on the craft we work on all the other things that um, go along with that craft and um with that you also get coaches like kidway me charlie powell who have either been olympians or gold medalists or who have coached olympians so it's like we you have you have top notch top notch coaching but also we just break down your event so you know exactly what you're doing at any given time. Where, when, um, when you do get a, a new athlete to commit to the academy, what is the first few months like for them? You know, especially if they're from out of state, you know, how do you kind of take in, I guess, a freshman or just a first year student to get them adjusted to this? new world of uh, you know at a uh, athlete focused learning well it is a little bit of an adjustment um of course we don't just you know, dive in and throw everything on them at once but it's it's just a little bit of a step-by-step -step process a little step-by-step -step procedure because we also have to make sure that they're you know healthy as the season goes on so we get them acclimated to the to the school environment first introduce some light training and then introduce uh, a little bit more training as we go but um especially at the beginning it's, it's like anything you got to sort of get used to it you got to get your you, you got to kind of like find your way around you have to you have to you have to get co consistent with your schedule and then as as they move as we, as they move forward we just add things in slowly both of you guys competed at the highest level in track and field what would your experience growing up or learning your event how would it have been different if you had exposure to to something like the services that are offered at spire i don't know if you've ever thought of that or you ever share that with your 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 athletes there on campus but how would it have been been different for you um it would have been different <laughs> be, be, because, well, I mean, for one, I would have, I would have been more accustomed to what college life was, mm -hmm. uh, from a personal accountability standpoint. Um, I got to college university of Georgia, go dogs. And, um, and all I was interested in was track and field practice and, and being social. And there's only there's it's there's 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 a set amount of time that typically you can last if that's if that's all that you're interested in right so like if i were in an environment like this it, it would have been it, it would have i would have learned the lesson earlier i guess is what i'm saying um there's that there's also you know to have um a really knowledgeable coach that would have really helped in in my high school where i was um as good of the numbers as i was putting up it was it was pretty much me and the coach like learning the event together which was great but you know it's 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 definitely you know a different kind of vibe 
Um, but I mean, I can say all those things and like, and I don't regret anything. I, I'm, you know, but it is, it would have been a, a different experience to have right. were I to have uh, a school like, like this in high school, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And I think it would have, it would have made a big difference though. I'm not going to get greedy. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how my career went, although it did take me a little while to get to where I was. Um, both Kibway and I are kind of like late bloomers, but I think that, um, that I would have maybe had a, a, a more of an appreciation. I would have had a, a little bit um, uh, better idea, of course, about my sport from, from, from my coach. And I would have been a little bit more prepared going into college. It's a little bit of a shocker when you go into college. But um, I would have had some time to slowly build a, a, like a better foundation of success, not only just for um, the sport, but also so I can almost get like a head start on what I was going to, what I was going to expect in college academically too. Um, but as far as the sports concerned, I, I would have had a, a better idea of everything else that's concerned with it, whether it's uh, sports psychology, it's the mental part, which is what we train on here too. It's, it's the taking care of the body. It's, it's the having the well-rounded meals. It's staying hydrated. It's just knowing all those things and making sure that those are instilled in me early and first. So then maybe I could have avoided some injuries later on in my career. You guys both brought up just the process to college and a big part of that is academics. With your high school athletes, do they get a advisors or help in that college placement process? Can, can one of you guys just touch on, on that step? Because obviously if someone's competing at a high level, their goal is to eventually uh, move on to, to the collegiate system and, and find a good match for them. What, what role does Spire play um, in that? Well, we do have a director of college planning and uh, her name is Jennifer Pruszynski and uh, she's, she, she really helps and aids those, uh, those athletes with their college decisions. And um, along with Kibway and my, and also Charlie's uh, advice as, as far as like athletically where maybe those, those um, which schools might be better for that certain event. Um, the academic advisor can be there to see um, exactly what school would fit them the best. Yeah, and the, the connections, uh, you know, the, the friends and, and whatnot that between the three of us know when the university system, like it's, it's a good gig to be able to help kids get into university and figure out where that be best fit is. When, when you look at track and field as a whole, especially U.S., you know, U.S. does a really good job at winning medals and does a good job at just being well represented at the global level. Um, and, but a lot of that, the backbone of that, you know, you could argue is because of the university system where a lot of these 18 and 22 year olds have great college coaches, and then, you know, have a good career. But what is the potential that you think U.S. track and field could have if there were, you know, say the 200 best track athletes of every high school class year were getting started by focusing on their sport, you know, during their high school years more seriously as opposed to waiting till red shirt freshman year when they had everything figured out? Uh, I think it's, I think it's tremendous. Um, it might be a tall task in, in certain events that, that kind of funnel into, you know, our professional sports, but for sure. And some jumps and especially, well, maybe not especially throws cause you, st you get a lot of football players there too, but, um, that's kind of what I would think is a bit of a dream of mine, like being here and, and to kind of create like a, a really sustainable hub for our youth and then into junior and then maybe sometimes like have some sort of hold in uh in the collegiate system as well to be able to facilitate is probably the best word right and then and then afterwards and i think um we're kind of on the road to doing something similar to that but that's that's kind of a taste of like how what my vision is for being here yeah, and I think it would be unbelievable. I mean, to have this kind of uh, environment, um, 
uh, to have coaches like this, to, to have um, so many people, such a support staff. And I think that was the biggest thing. And as I got older is that I noticed as I was like, oh, man, if I had this kind of support staff when I was in high school, I don't even know what, you know, what, what I could have done. Like maybe I could have won, you know, two gold medals. And again, I'm happy with where things are, but, but I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't know. Um, I think that, I think it's, it's just endless as to far as, as far as like what we could actually do. Um, given what we have here right now and given this, the, the staff we have here and given the people that, that are behind us and that, that are, that are really forward thinking in this, in this whole Spire um, program. And when you look at the Spire Academy as a whole, obviously focus is academics and their specific uh, sport, but is there any other unique benefits that Spire Academy offers outside of their sport and you know math reading science social studies um like any cool extracurricular type programs that you guys offer well we also kind of focus on you know on their on their personal skills and their career path development i mean uh there, there's a lot of uh ways to, in order for the athletes to get real life experience i mean a lot of times they can they can work at a lot of the events here um, we also have like esports and gaming, and um, there's also a way for them to experience some of that, you know. And uh, they can experience so many things here, as far as like, um, as far as like cafeteria wise, as far as front office, and uh, how how those things how those things work and how those things operate. Um, yeah, we, we we try to we try to not only just develop that athlete, but we also kind of try to develop that that athlete as a person as an individual too and i think yeah, I part of that guys... is oh. yeah Go. i think part of that is um we're i mean it's an international school and so to be able to bring people from different countries and different cultures and put them in a school is is really remarkable to have that sort of experience like so you know when i think about myself and in my professional career over however many years it was. And what I enjoyed most was being able to travel and meet people. And if, and I think it's, it's, it's a luxury and it's a benefit and a value to be able to have those type of experiences with, with people as a teenager, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so that, that world really gets smaller at a much younger age at a place like this. I wish my high school had esports. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, yeah. Uh, can you guys uh, can you guys talk more just about the campus itself and the facilities that are available? I've I've been there once, and I remember parking in the parking lot and thinking I'd be able to just walk directly and see the track. But unbeknownst to me, there were several parking lots, and the campus was enormous, mm. and I didn't even get to explore a portion of it. I just went directly into the track once I found out. I remember it was crazy because the weekend I was there, one conference was having track championships and another conference from another part of the country was having swimming championships at the same time, at the same facility. It was it was crazy, kind of blew my mind. But for the people who would be in this program, you know, what are some of the facilities that are available to them um, in the track and field uh, portion of, of the Spire campus? Well, in you would be even you'd be even more impressed now as they went from I think a hundred could be 170 acres to now they have three or four hundred acres. So there's oh. a lot more property and there's going to be a lot more things they're going to be developing here. That's why it's going to be so exciting. It's a lot more a, coming. A hotel. Yeah, there's going to be a hotel that's going to be breaking ground soon. Um, a, a few more residents are going residences are going to be going up. But um, yeah, the the athlete has obviously an indoor track. It's a it's a full three hundred yard three hundred meter indoor track with a with a turf field in the middle. Um, of course, two two pole vault runways, two long jump runways, high jump apron area. This is all indoors with with capacity for um, a number of spectators. Um, we, there's also a banquet area here. That's just at the indoor track area. Um, and then you can you can go over to the, uh, the the classrooms, which is just just adjacent to the uh, track and field. And uh, there you have the classrooms and the esport gaming and 
the robotics lab. And so there's, there's, there's so much more there. And then there, there, there's also the, where they have the, the, uh, performances. That's where our weight room is, um, swimming pool, full, um, Olympic size swimming pool with also, uh, uh, another warm up pool next to that. And that's in building, I guess, number two, and then you get to the third building and then there's a full size soccer field in there with, with, uh, I think there's like six, six basketball courts. I mean, I could be, I I could be wrong right. about that, but there's, there's some, there's some brand new basketball courts. They have the Cav Cleveland Cavaliers old, old basketball court in there. So that's kind of neat for people to play on a actual NBA, oh, wow. uh, basketball court. So they have that old court in there and then there, there, there's a number of uh, volleyball courts too. So, I mean, you know, plans for, uh, possible cross country and, uh, a number of other things that, uh, I don't know if I'm even at liberty to say, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much here. Yeah, but there's so much. There's, well, there's, there's so an out much here. We're so excited. There's an outdoor track as well, too. Correct. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course. How the outdoor that track. Yeah, I was really so nice. fired up about everything else. <laughs> Kibwe, what? Kibwe, what, what stood out to you? What would you say? What stood out to you about the facilities? Oh, the facilities. Um, the indoor track, I think, which is surprising to say, <laughs> um, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's in general, like the, the facilities are here and, and the intent is present to be able to, to utilize them like to their fullest capacity and not just have events all the time. So, um, I, I find that to be pretty cool. Um, the there's a throws field which is a really good size and a bunch of rings and and a javelin runway as well so i'm particularly pretty fond of that area and that's outside and mm -hmm. it's nice and it's you know the weather is nice to go out there now and not freeze i as well, a long no. thrower i'm sure it, it warms your heart to be able to have a space to do long throws right yeah yeah you said it there <laughs> yeah. so, so for perspective student athletes who might feel like this type this world for them is intriguing and might be something for them what's the way to go about getting involved the, the, applying uh being selected being being a member of the, the spire academy well to get to get um on at, or to, to be to be to get some information on spire i'm sorry um you really simply have the website, um, and there you can easily fill out a form. Uh, there's really, there's really no, there's really no deadline to apply. Um, of course, there are, there is, um, uh, there, there, there is financial aid. So obviously, the the sooner the better. But you can easily go on online and, and on their website, and you can look at um, what we have to offer. Fill out a form, and 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 they're really good at getting back with you within 24 hours. Mary Lee or Lindsay or Keith, and um, they'll get back to you and try to answer as many questions as possible. And then, you know, at some point, you, you know, you can even reach out to the coaches and uh, we're more than willing to, to uh, get to talk to the, to, to the uh, student athlete about, about their situation and to see if we can get them in here or to see if they want to come to a camp or maybe they want to come to a weekly high school, uh, weekly high school training, but we will, we will figure out the best thing for them. What, uh, I mean, you guys have been around for, for a few years. What, uh, what are some, are there any notable athletes that have gone in through the academy and came out pretty well on the other side, uh, where, you know, they're doing well at the college stage, um, and just, you know, just have a good experience from going through, uh, this unique opportunity of getting intense training as a young high school student. Yeah, well, there was one um, gentleman that came through here. He was for the bag with the basketball academy, but it was Lamelo Ball. Uh, he came through here, and I guess he's doing okay right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but I know there's also there's also a guy I was just actually watching watching last night. It was Michigan State, and he's the uh, he's a point guard for Michigan State right now, and he he was actually not the point guard, and then he got the nod to be to start because maybe I think somebody got injured, and he was. Um, he was lighting it up. I think he had 20 points the other night. Um, so um, obviously he's, he's, he's doing a great job too. 
we're working on the cool. track and field people. There are there have been a number of track and people field people who have been through here, and Charlie would be able to contest to that and 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 let you know a little bit more about that at, at maybe another time. But um, he's gotten some people to some universities and uh, and there's high jumpers, long jumpers, and and sprinters alike. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. The website is spireinstitute.org uh, if people want to find out more information. Tim, Mack, Kibway, Johnson, thank you both so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. Thank you.